Good day, kind people of the internet. Welcome back to my channel. Sorry I've been MIA for a little while. Um, my life has been just crazy. I've been running back and forth between different places and I've not found time to make a video in that space. So I'm sorry that I missed an upload last week and then two weeks before that. But I'm back and better than ever and I don't know why every time I decide to film a video my eyes start tearing up. But anyway, as you can tell by the title, today we're ranking all of the books that I've read so far this year by their first lines. <laughs> this is a video that I did not make up. I've seen Ariel Bassett do it with classics, so she ranks classics according to their first lines and then I've seen Jack Edwards do it with several stacks of books that he has and hasn't read so far this year. <laughs> I haven't read that many books. I've read 12 books so far this year. I'm busy also reading another two books at the moment and I wanted to read 20 books this year and there is a month and a half left of this year so can I read six more books in a month and a half? I'm gonna try my very best. Uh, anyway, without further ado, we're gonna get right into this video Sorry if I keep looking down. I'm looking at my laptop to see which books I've read. I have my phone here because most of the books I have read I don't own, so I have to look up their first lines on good bo good good books on Google Books, and then I have a stack of books that I actually do own that I have with me that I've read this year or that I'm currently reading. So we're going to go in reverse order. We're going to start at the books that I read first this year and work our way to the books that I'm currently reading. If that's okay with you, you don't really have a choice, so let's just get started. The first book I read this year uh, was The Intuitionist by Colson Whitehead, and the first line goes as follows. It's a new elevator, freshly pressed to the rails, and it's not built to fall this fast. Now, that already tells me something is going very wrong. In the first line of this book, I've already discovered that something has to happen that it was not supposed to happen and honestly it's an intriguing first line so it makes me want to continue reading so this is the first book I read and it's at the top because there's nothing else to compete against it at this point so um, the next book I read was Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky and here's his first line don't leave the street they can't get to you if you don't leave the street now, <laughs> I mean, that was technically the first two lines because the first line is don't leave the street. And that doesn't say much, but the first two lines are both italicized, so I just thought I should read them as one. So technically I'm cheating, but sh let's not tell anybody. Um, don't leave the street, they can't get you if you don't leave the street. Mmm. Mmm. Intriguing. Really intriguing as well. Hmm, I think this one's going to go above Intuitionist because knowing what happens in this book, this whole don't leave the street, they can't get you if you don't leave the street, plays a, quite an important role in this book as well. So it's not only drawing me in, but it's also foreshadowing some other parts of the story, which I think is very good. Um, so I'm going to move it above. The Intuitionist. Um, I feel like I'm just going to keep moving each book above the previous one. But anyway, um, the next book I have that I read is Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. There was something you wanted to tell me, wasn't there? Mm, listen, it's intriguing. There was something you wanted to tell me, wasn't there? I mean, it's a good opening line, it's not bad, but it's just not as good as the other two, I think. It's intriguing, and it makes you want to read the rest of the book, because also, you don't know who you is. You don't know who the you is that Jules is talking to, Jules who's, whose chapter this is. But I think I'm going to put it underneath the Intuitionist, just because it didn't hit me as hard as the other two did. Next, the next book I have is a one that I actually own a physical copy of, and that is The Snow Goose by Paul Gallico. It's technically The Snow Goose and 
the miracle, the small miracle. But the Snow Goose is the first book, the, the first short story in this book, and it's also the titular short story. So I'm going to read you the first line of the Snow Goose. The Great Marsh lies on the Essex coast between the village of Chalmbury and the ancient Saxon oyster fishing hamlet of Wickledroth. It's informative. Um, it tells you where the Great Marsh is, because the story apparently takes place in the Great Marsh, and it's, it's important for you to know where the Great Marsh is. Um, yeah, no, not the best of opening... Well, I mean, it's informative, so it's not a bad opening line, but it's not as good as the others. So this, this Paul Gallico is just going to slide right underneath Paula Hawkins. I thought this was going to be more difficult. I thought all of the opening lines were going to be really great. Okay. The next book I read was The Princess Diarist by Carrie Fisher, which is a memoir and basically just a story of her and, what's his name, Harrison Ford's affair and how she got the Star Wars part. Two years before Star Wars, I'd been in a film called Shampoo, starring and produced by Warren Beatty and directed by Hal Ashby. This is the very bottom. <laughs> I mean... <sighs> Obviously, if you're reading this book, it's because you're interested in Carrie Fisher, so this would be nice for you to know. And it is, like, I suppose, a good introduction to her life before Star Wars. Or her, her not her life, but her career before Star Wars. But, um, it's kind of boring, to be honest. So this is going underneath Paul Gallico. The next book I read was 1984 by George Orwell. And let me first of all tell you that this book is very confusing. Very profound, because I find myself thinking about it very often. Because the society that we live in today is very similar to the one that George describes in this book. But it is very confusing at times. I listened to the audiobook for this. And I think if I hadn't listened to the audiobook, I don't think I would have finished this book. Because if I had to read this all by myself, I would have <sighs> been so confused that that I probably would have just been like, I can't do this, I've put it down. But anyway, let me read you the first line and we can decide together. It was a bright cold day in April and the clocks were striking 13. Now, that is a very ambiguous first line because it says nothing. It tells you that the clocks are striking 13, which is impossible because clocks can't strike 13 because there are only 12 numbers on a clock. But we have 24 hour time, which means that 13 would be one o'clock, but also a clock physically cannot strike 13 because there's no number 13 on it, which just tells you that something in this world is not entirely all right. <laughs> many, actually many things in this world are not all right if their clocks can strike 13, but, um, I'm... I don't know where to put this thing because it's a great first line and it is iconic because anybody who has ever read 1984 or heard about 1984 might be able to recognize this first line so it's a very recognizable first line but it's not as great to me as some of the other ones so... but it's still a very intriguing first line I think I'm gonna put it underneath the intuitionist. So between Colson Whitehead and Paula Hawkins, we're putting Mr. George. Then the next book I have that I read is one that I own. It's um, The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. And let's see what's the th this first line. What does his first line say? 3,000 years ago, there was a human just like you and me who lived near a city surrounded by mountains. Hmm interesting it doesn't really okay it kind of t tells you what this book is about because it gives you background on the toltec which is the wisdom this is a toltec wisdom book but it teach it sort of tells you about the history or the backstory of this guy who was trying to learn how to be a toltec it doesn't really give you his backstory though it just tells you where he lived there was a human just like you and me that's an interesting line because it makes you sort of feel like you... It, well, I mean, it includes you because it says a human just like you and me. Which is basically saying that you are no different from this person who did this thing. So, 
in a nutshell, you can also do the things that he did. Where may I put this one? Mm. Hmm. It doesn't immediately grab me. I think this one is going underneath Paula Hawkins. The next book I have is also one that I own. It's Mrs. Dalloway. And I think everybody knows this first line. Everybody who's read Mrs. Dalloway knows this first line by heart. So I don't even have to open the book to read it, but I will. <laughs> Mrs. Dalloway said she would buy the flowers herself. Now, listen, this is very indicative of how the rest of the story is going to go because it kind of tells you everything and nothing at the same time but it does kind of give you an insight about how Mrs. Dalloway is or who she is because this book is called Mrs. Dalloway so it's about her and Mrs. Dalloway said she would buy the flowers herself she's like no you don't have time to buy these flowers you can't do it I will do it myself which is kind of like she's a little bit of a control freak she's a little bit impatient um <laughs> and she's like fine if you can't do it, then I'll just have to do it. I don't want to go and buy the flowers myself. I just will, because I know that if it, I don't do it, it won't get done. <sighs> so, hmm, interesting. Interesting first line. Hmm, it's also one of those iconic first lines, like 1984, because so many people have read Mrs. Dalloway, and it's such an old book. Um, hmm. Hmm. I think this one is just going to slide in above the four agreements. Now I have to feel like I have to go back to... No, I think I think it's going to go above Paula Hawkins, to be honest. Because Mrs. Dalloway said she would buy the flowers herself. There was something you wanted to tell me, wasn't there? <sighs> Mrs. Dalloway said she would buy the flowers herself. Yeah, I think this one's going about Paula Hawkins. I, that's where I'm going to put it, and that's my final answer. The next book I read was Bewilderment by Richard Powers, which I um, didn't research, apparently. <laughs> okay, let me do that quickly. <laughs> oh no, this is such a great book, but this opening line is just not great. This is just... Mm -mm. This is so... If, if I were to recommend to you, of all of the books so far that I've read this year, it would be Bewilderment, but this opening line does not do it justice. <sighs> but we might never find them, question mark. Mm, I'm going to read you the second line as well. But we, but we might never find them. We'd set up a scope on the deck on a clear autumn night on the edge of one of the last patches of darkness in the eastern U.S. That is not much better, hey? I think I'm going to put this one above Carrie Fisher, which is really unfortunate because it is such a great book, but this opening line is just not doing it for me. <laughs> the next book I read this year was The City of Mist by Carlos Ruiz Zafon, and it is also a collection of short stories. Um, so I'm going to read you the first line of the first short story. The first short story is called Blanca and the Departure from the Imagined Memoirs of One David Martin. Translated by Lucia Graves. Um, okay, so here we go. I've always envied the ease with which some people are able to forget. People for whom the past is only a set of last season's clothes or a pair of old shoes that can be simply condemned to the back of a cupboard to ensure they're unable to retrace lost footsteps. I mean, um, if that's not <laughs> some flowery first line, then I don't know what his. I've always envied the ease with which some people are able to forget. Even that, because there's a dash in between that and the second part of the clause. Um, I've always envied the ease with which some people are able to forget. Even that is powerful. If that was the first line, full stop, that would have been amazing as well. And then you get the whole thing. This one's difficult because it's a long one. But it also tells you so much about the, the narrator of this story. I've always envied the ease with which some people are able to forget. I don't know where to put this one. I honestly think this one is going to break the spell. 
and it's going to be on top, be the first one, or second. Don't cross, don't cross the street, don't go in, go onto the street, what is this? I mean, I can't even remember it, so don't leave the street, they can't get you if you don't leave the street. I've always envied the ease with which some people are able to forget. The fact that that is also translated makes it even more fantastic. I would love to be able to read Spanish so that I could read the original, but I cannot, so I will just have to read the translation. I'm, I'm going to put this one on top. The next book I read was the Little French Recipe Book by Jackie Durand, which is also one of my favorite books I read this year. It's such a nice story. It's such a wholesome, sweet, just makes you feel good kind of story. So let me give you this first line. I cannot drag my eyes away from your hands on the hospital bed cover. Don't judge this book by its first line. It kind of tells you a little bit about the relationship of the person and the person who is sick. But it also makes you focus on the hands. Like, why is he looking at his hands? Because the hands are a very integral part of the story because the characters are chefs, they are cooks, so they use their hands a lot. Mm. But also, it doesn't pull me in as much as some of the others have. I think I'm going to put this one just below 1984. The last book that I've finished already this year is Brain on Fire by Susanna Cahalan. It's also a memo memoir, <laughs> a memoir um, about her journey with mental issues. It's not mental illness um, because it was actually a brain issue with her actual brain, not with her mental state, but it made her seem crazy. At first there was just darkness and silence. Hmm. This is another case where the first line does not do the book justice because this book is really interesting. At first, there's just darkness and silence. I mean, it kind of... No, it kind of actually is a really good book book opening line, first line, because if you think about somewhere where it's dark and silent, you kind of think of being in a vacuum. And in a vacuum, you can talk to nobody, and you can reach nobody, and nobody can reach you, and nobody can talk to you. Which is kind of symbolic of, like how it was first, at first when she got sick, when nobody knew what was wrong with her and she didn't know how to tell anybody what she was feeling. So it's kind of a great first line in that sense, but it's not a really great first line in the sense of having to draw people in, which is kind of the job of a first line. I think this one At first there's just darkness and silence. I think I'm gonna put this one underneath Paula Hawkins because it's surely not worse than Paul Gallico or Carrie Fisher's first lines. But Paula Hawkins' line still has that, you know, pulling you in kind of factor. There are two more books that I need to still talk about. <laughs> so, currently I'm busy reading the Psychopath Test by John Ronson and A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. Um, so let's go with these two and we'll read their first lines and I'll tell you what I think about them. I'm not very far into The Psychopath Test, as you can tell. <laughs> um, okay, chapter one is called The Missing Part of the Puzzle Revealed. Uh, this is a story about madness. Mm -mm. And even the second line. This is a story about madness. It begins with a curious encounter at a Costa coffee shop in Bloomsbury, central London. Nope. I mean, it's a pretty interesting book so far, and I'm not very far in. But this is not a great opening line. I think this one is going to go just above Carrie Fisher. In terms of opening lines, it's not great. Ah, <sighs> uh, no. It's another bad first line. Okay, chapter one of A Discovery of Witches. The leather-bound volume was nothing remarkable. The second and third lines are so much better than the first line of this book. The leather-bound journal... No? 
Ha! The leather-bound volume was nothing remarkable. To an ordinary historian, it would have looked no different from the hundreds of other manuscripts in Oxford's Bodleian Library, ancient and worn. But I knew there was something odd about it from the moment I collected it. Is that not so much better? But the first line is just the leather-bound volume was nothing remarkable. I don't know. It's just not the greatest. I'm going to, I think. Let me just revisit Paul Gallico. Paul Gallico's was quite long. The great marsh lies on the Essex coast between the village of Chelmbury and the ancient Saxon oyster fishing hamlet of Wickledroth. Yeah, the leather bound volume was nothing remarkable. I think <clears throat> this um, discovery of witches. People really need better first lines. But also, these books were published a long time ago when people didn't care so much about first lines apparently as they do today. Um, mm, I think I'm going to put this one above the snow goose, but just above the snow goose, no further up. That was my ranking of all the books I've read so far this year. I would love to hear how you would rank these, because you possibly don't have the bias that I have of having read them all already. So do with that what you will, but I would love to see your ranking. Or you can just tell me your favorite line. If you don't want to do a whole list, you could just tell me your favorite line um, of all of the books that I've read so far this year. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you again next week with my next video, which I'm very excited about because I already know what it's going to be. And I'm already starting doing research and filming for it now. A week ahead of schedule. Look at me go. <laughs> but I will see you then. Bye.